Yeah, I, I, you know, I think we've, you know, we're in that mode right now. We've got to, you know, recover. Not as active in free agency maybe as you'd like to be at times. And, and look, I think we're probably going to be in that mode for another year or so. Saints fans, General Manager Mickey Loomis just confirmed what we all thought about the team at the owners meeting earlier this week. It has been a very boring offseason to say the least for the New Orleans Saints. One of the most exciting things this offseason was the hiring of Clint Kubiak to be the offensive coordinator and the offensive play caller from the San Francisco 49ers. Anytime you get a coach from there, it's usually a sign of good things to come. There have been some like flashy but pretty good signings for the Saints like defensive end Chase Young and linebacker Willie Gay and in my opinion some of the most underrated ones are Cedric Wilson, Stanley Morgan, and Xander Horvath. But aside from those few signings, there hasn't really been much going on for the Saints. And the talking point of the offseason hasn't been a big signing or even the Clint Kubiak hiring. The main talking point this offseason since January has been about what the future holds for star cornerback Marshawn Lattimore in his future, whether or not he gets traded or stays with the Saints. The talking point has been about the Saints' best player. So a boring offseason, right? Right? Boring for now, but exciting for the future, and I'm about to tell you why because this was actually the plan from the start for the Saints going into the 2024 offseason. We're so used to Mickey Loomis and the Saints organization being all in for a Super Bowl, always thinking they're in a win now mode, every offseason trying to sign the most big name players and stay competitive. And in comparison to this offseason, things were very different and uneventful, but in a good way. The Saints since 2020, the COVID year, have been screwed when it comes to the cap space. The pandemic that year prevented the NFL salary cap from increasing and is a huge reason why the Saints have been in cap hell. Every offseason since and have had to maneuver their way in and out to get under the cap and at some point the Saints had to start cleaning it up. Because you simply can't live every offseason 100 million under the cap. I mean technically, technically they could do this every offseason. But I mean, it's just ideal and smart to finally start to clean it up. And that's exactly what they're doing. All offseason on this channel, we've been speculating that the Saints were being reserved with their money and their spending so they can clean up the cap space. But as it turns out, that wasn't just guessing. Based on their actions and actions speak louder than words, but as of this past week, Mickey Loomis confirmed their actions by saying that being limited and not spending a lot of money this offseason was part of their plan. It's kind of the idea this offseason that the, and you mentioned this at the combat just are you guys really going through that process of trying to get a little bit of yeah, cleaner cap and yeah, absolutely. these moves kind of telling the same story just yeah I, I you know i think we've you know we're in that mode right now we've got to you know recover from from you know some of the things that that happened with covid and the contracts that we did in the past and so not as active in free agency maybe as you'd like to be at times um and and look i think we're probably going to be in that mode for another year or so that's kind of the realistic timetables maybe this year and, next yeah. year and then you're kind of where you want to be. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Again, that part of that depends upon how we perform, you know, how players perform, how our, how our team performs, what the cap is. There's a lot of variables that go with that. Um, so, yeah, we, we got to get our plan back on pace. Um, and it was you know, it was knocked off pace by, by, the, uh, by COVID and, and, you know, the reduction in the cap and all the things that came with it. And this was an intentional part of the process to start cleaning up the cap so they can no longer have to finagle their way in and out of the cap every off season. And also so they can spend big money on a big free agent in the future. So they don't have to, you know, just get the second and third wave free agents. So like I've been saying off season, yes, this approach is very, very boring, especially right now. And yes, of course, it's more exciting to see the Saints sign a big name guy like Christian Wilkins or Saquon Barkley or Justin Simmons. But hey, guess what? What they're doing right now is great and exactly what they should be doing. They are not going in for a Super Bowl. They're not going all in. They're taking a step back and cleaning up the cap space, which is exactly what they should be doing right now. And even if you look at the free agent signings they've made, they're very, very good in terms of contract, not the player. All of their signings are players under 30 years old. They're on one year deals. They have low risk, but high reward for the Saints, minimal investments in a soft rebuild. What the Saints are doing right now is exactly what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did last off season. 
which is when Tom Brady retired. They took on some of the cap hits on their contracts, signed players on minimal deals, signed Baker Mayfield to a cheap contract, and hired a good LC from the Seattle Seahawks, which led them to win a playoff game. Not only win a playoff game, but they hosted a playoff game. Granted, they did win the worst division in all of football, so I mean, I don't know how much that says, and then they played the worst playoff team in the playoffs. So, but at the same time, you know, that approach worked, and the one the Saints did going all in didn't. Because when you look at last offseason, the Saints went all in to win the South. Signing Derek Carr, getting Jamal Williams, getting Foster Moreau, signing defensive tackles, getting a first round pick last season instead of a first round pick for this season in that Sean Payton trade. And going all in last season simply just failed miserably, especially with Dennis Allen and Derek Carr duo. Like it just didn't work. So what the Saints are doing right now is what Tampa Bay did last offseason and I like it. I like their approach, a soft, competitive rebuild. In hindsight, this process should have started after Drew Brees retired. Just like how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers started their process the offseason exactly right after Tom Brady retired. But hey, better late than never and better to do it now than to do it later. And this is the perfect time to do this if I'm the Saints. You have a terrible, terrible head coach. You have a bad quarterback. You need to get younger as a team. Start drafting better and saving money. So add those things all together and you're not in a win now mode. You are in a rebuild or a soft competitive rebuild mode. And that's exactly what the Saints are doing. I don't know how long the process actually will be, but, but I'm assuming about two years, which is what Mickey Loomis said himself. Maybe expect another offseason or two like this one that we're currently experiencing. Yes, another few offseason of boring bullshit, but hey, if you want to see Christian Wilkins get signed or a Christian Wilkins type of player get signed to the Saints in the future, then you have to go through the pain now. Now, of course, things could change. Say the Saints get to the NFC Championship game next season, which, I mean, won't happen because, well, Dennis Allen and Derek Carr, that's all I got to say. But hypothetically, let's say that happens. The Saints should become an all-in team and go big spending and find a way to maneuver the cap, but, but I do not see that happening. However, I am concerned that this process and this offseason will give Mickey Loomis another excuse to keep Dennis Allen around, no matter the results. He could say, oh well, Dennis Allen didn't have the best opportunities or the best players to have success because we took a step back and we're trying to clean up the cap right now and we couldn't get any big name free agents. I don't care. No more excuses. Dennis Allen has picked out his quarterback, unfortunately. He's our quarterback now. Then he also got to pick out Clint Kubiak, his new offensive coordinator. He has his defensive staff that he brought in, his homeboys. Everything that he needs to have success is available. And we'll have to see what the results end up being, but it just seems like Mickey Loomis is too stubborn to make a big change because Dennis Allen is his friend. So we'll have to see how the season goes before we even get to that. But, but that is a concern of mine because they have made excuses for Dennis Allen the past two seasons. After the 2022 year, it was, oh, the quarterback sucked. The injuries were terrible. You know, once you get healthy in the right quarterback, then, then he'll be good. Then in 2023, had the easiest schedule in the league, handpicked his quarterback, brought in his defensive staff, and they went 9-8 and eight and second in the division, the worst division in all of football, despite paying their quarterback the most in that whole division. And the excuse for the 2023 season was that Pete Carmichael was a bad offensive play caller, which he was. But guess who decided to keep him over the past two seasons? Dennis Allen. So I guess we'll have to see where the season takes us and whether or not they will use this free agent approach and cleaning up the cap space process as an excuse for Dennis Allen. However, cleaning up the cap and all of these moves don't actually matter if the Saints cannot draft better. Cleaning up the cap and getting more money for the future, getting younger and becoming a team that spends a lot in the future won't matter unless you get a good young core group of guys in these upcoming drafts. Look at the 2016-ish Saints. They got rid of a lot of players. These kind of did a soft rebuild in the 2016 and the 2017 Saints were able to get good players in the draft and they did a little bit of a rebuild and guess what? They were Super Bowl contenders from 2017 to 2020. Now I'm not saying that's gonna happen because you need two really great draft classes and a good head coach and a good quarterback to become a Super Bowl contender with two good draft classes, but a good draft class now and a good draft class next season or whatever it may be can help build for the future when the Saints do get a new head coach and a franchise quarterback. So as the Saints work their way to getting under the cap this offseason, taking contract hits, being cheap to be like everyone else in the NFL when it comes to salary cap space in the future, they must, they must hit on these upcoming draft picks. 
the front office is finally building for the future as they should and it's better to be late than to never do it in my opinion. It's just a matter of can they be patient enough to do this for the next few off seasons because you know how much Mickey Loomis and the Saints front office love to spend money and go all in so they need to be patient, trust the process, and stick to their plan. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Peace.